says, come and see familiar faces. On the meet, Rob Daniels, John Snow. Gary's here, it's a place to go. Grab a star the block with my young Hey! Hey, wait, what are you doing? You're wearing a shirt. What are you, why are you not wearing a shirt? Dude, this is not the oh. Dolphin special. This oh. is not Brain After Dark. That's Fridays. Fridays is Saturday. Oh, shit. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> we grab a stack of rock. Where we grab stacks of rock and we wear clothes doing them. Sleeveless, though. That's allowed. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Well, uh, well Mike is getting the clothes back. That's Thanks much for the better. Save, buddy. Thanks for the save. And it's a good thing I had this grab a stack of rock shirt from ePublic.com handy. How oh, convenient. And it's also a good thing I have this grab a stack of rock mug from ePublic.com handy, which is the same place that I got this too loud, too old music shirt from. There you go. Folks, the message here is don't go topless. ePublic.com is where it's at. Cover yourselves. Welcome to the show, folks. It is a special surprise Saturday morning. It is 10 a.m. Atlantic, but it is only 9 a.m. here in Eastern Standard Time. And as you know, we like to start every show with a little thing called Ask Harrison, but Harrison just woke up, so we have to do something instead today called Ask Jax. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right. Here is today's question for today's co-host. Hey, grab a stack of rock. It's Mike, and I'm just sitting here listening to the Arkells, and I have a special guest here who has a question for Jex Russell. Hey, Jex, it's me, the Canadian Snow Turtle, and I would like to hear you say something in French. Can you say, grab a stack of rock? <laughs> oh, whipped cream. <laughs> <laughs> Man, a lot's going on today. We're going topless, got the whipped cream out. <laughs> Those two things can go together if you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, preferably not here. <laughs> no, right uh, for free. I can't believe you got a rare sighting of a Canadian snow turtle. Those Who are knew? super rare. Uh, anything uh, can happen at the cottage. Yeah, especially that there's no more snow. All the snow right. is gone. So. Right. We're lost. Uh, okay, you want to hear me so say something French? The thing is, I meant to look up the word for stack in, in French, and I forgot to do so. Uh, stack. Pile? And get it right. So, okay, okay. Let's flick the switch. Let's put it on the French. Okay, français, français. Bonjour les amis. On va penser à comment dire grab a stack of rock ce matin. Donc, uh, grab a stack of rock. Pogne une pile de rock. I just had a brilliant <laughs> idea. We're going to do a bilingual episode one day. You're going to ah, translate. <laughs> here you go. <laughs> but no, today we're doing a special box of cassettes that I have next to me here. We're going to go through this entire box and look at what's inside. And I also have a CD to depackage. And I think you have some things you have as well. Uh, well, I have a few things to show uh, cassette related, uh, you know, in connection to what you'll be showing. So that's, yeah, that's later down the line. All right. Well, let's get this depackaging out of the way. A few weeks ago, we did something here on the front porch called Jazz Saturday, and I wanted some more jazz to play in the front porch, and Mr. Robert Lawson recommended Pat Metheny, Bright Size Life. Uh, I specifically requested something laid back and instrumental, and funny, we mentioned this yesterday, uh, you and I, uh, getting CDs or tapes or what have you and not having anything to play it in until you get home. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> actually... There is no Jazz Saturday with this album because I have to wait till I get home to have something to play it on. Oh, man. Speaking of jazz, you want to see my favorite jazz fusion album? Yeah. Since I have uh, conveniently my collection here, hang on. Uh... 
Ooh, Herbie Hancock. Yeah, yes. Headbangers. Legendary. This, this album right here. Absolutely love it. That opening track, Chameleon, that goes on for like almost 15 minutes. That's like I'm 15 pretty minutes sure before. that some tracks from that album have made the Sausage Fest countdown numerous times. Really? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Well, I have a stack of rock here. A huge box of cassettes. Now, just as a, as a forewarning, before people get too excited, most of my cassettes, it seems, from this era are ones that I recorded myself. But I did a really smash-up job in the artwork, if I do say so. And, I'm, and I'm excited. Basically, what happened was I kind of like had this obsessive compulsive disorder where I had to have all of my music portable so I could listen to it in my Walkman and in my car, which had a tape deck, which meant that I was taping every single CD that I owned onto cassette, which we shall see. Now, apparently this box contains my cassette collection from Journey through to Niacin. I thought I lost all my cassettes, but it turns out there was one box remaining in my parents' basement. And, I don't uh, even, I don't even know who Niacin is. Oh, you know? really? Ask yeah. Deke. Ask really? Deke. His favorite bass player is in there. What is it? Are they Canadian? Like, who's his favorite bass player? Oh, common knowledge. <laughs> Billy Sheehan's Jazz Project. Ah, okay. Jazz. Now I don't actually see that tape in here, but these are a little bit jumbled. I'll just grab a stack here, and we have featuring Mr. Common Knowledge himself. Mr. Big. Now, hey, man. I did the logo. I did the font for the the title. And this was recorded on a Denon for those who care about such things. I never even heard of Denon. Man, I am getting school today. Really? Yeah. I kind of tried to copy the way that the songs were written on the back of the CD. Attention to detail. I love it. Here's, here's a uh, an actual cassette. Okay, Mr. Bungle. Mike Patton's group, Mr. Bungle, their first album, fantastic. Um, still pretty good shape, although you can see a little bit of wear on the writing. Yeah, well, that's inevitable, right? That happens over time. Yeah. I think this is slightly different from the CD in the way that the um, the songs go from side A to side B. Um, okay. I think there's there might be some kind of... There's something. There's something different. Oh, yeah. More Mr. Bungle, uh, their last album, well, not their last album, it was their last album until recently, uh, California. Uh, um, nothing much to speak of here. I had uh, like a pencil case full of uh, different colored marker pens. So this one's in purple. This one is cool. Neurotic Outsiders. And it looks like I probably cut that out of like a press release. Huh. And uh, yeah, I wanted the spines to look good because that's what people were seeing. Right. Um, these were printed out on a computer. The best of Motorhead. And I went to the trouble of printing the album cover out as well. There you go. Any uh, any track listing on that one? Yep. Ah, there it is. Right. Oh, look at that. Look at that. All printed and neat. Yeah. I had <laughs> uh, a few different bits of software for making cassette covers. And... Uh, I wonder if that website is still active. The metal is.com. Who knows? That's funny. I don't even know why I, I guess that was the label it was on. I don't know. Huh. Um, looks like for this one, this was from the era where I was going to the library and getting photocopies made, shrinking them down and turning them into the cassette cover. And I colored in the Mr. Big logo in red with a pencil crayon. I love the look. Even like colored in red like that. I don't know. Very art, uh, art and you go. And again, you know, trying to copy the font using all lowercase. Dude. I don't know. Like, it, it, it's like, who was this for? It wasn't for the, the well, public. It was for me. Yeah, but you had, you had fun doing it, right? And you wanted it to look good. You cared about your cassettes. Back in the days when we had time to do such a thing, right? Now, here's a stack of Motley Crue. Oh, wow. Dr. And... I want, to, I want to point out a couple interesting things here. Um, first of all, this one here, uh, the Motley Crue Greatest Hits, is on a really slim, slim, slim cassette cassette case compared to the oh, other yeah. ones. I've seen, um, I have some. A Fuji. I have some like that, yeah. They're cool. Yeah. It goes in backwards. 
And then I have this Dr. Feelgood. Um, and you can see I kind of went to the effort of drawing part of the album cover, but then using the other part for the track listing. And that's the Dude. fully remastered version. Dude, you drew the tiles with the wear and tear. That's yeah. impressive. Yeah. That's impressive. Um, this cassette Smart. went through many, many iterations over the years. Uh, there was something else on. So I initially had everything on one side of a 90. And I can't remember what was on the other side of that 90. But that's why it was a split cover. Because I had Dr. Feel got on one side of the 90 originally. And something else on the other side. And then when the remastered version came out. I used that original cover that I made back in 1990. I made that. I drew that in 1990. Wow. I used that, cut it out, and pasted it onto this new computer-generated track listing. Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. Um, <laughs> Motley Crue, Generation Swine. I would have cut that out of, again, uh, a promo flyer with the album artwork on it. But do you remember how the CD was, the artwork was backwards? You know, the CD yeah. opened backwards. So I did that with the cassette. We're... Oh, Shit. there that we go. Cassette. That cassette <laughs> is covered in whipped cream. <laughs> We'll just put that aside for now. Uh, but anyway, oh. did a pretty good job of the artwork. <laughs> Folks, you've heard of the spaghetti incident. Behold the whipped cream, whipped cream incident. incident. Um, wow. Fully remastered with bonus tracks. But yeah, I did the the, uh, the Backward. cover backwards, just like the CD. And uh, on the back, there's even a, a pig. Look at that. Mike, Wait. I'm really impressed by the attention to detail. Are you these? Impressed or saddened? No, impressed. Uh, I would have probably done the same. But, nothing uh, too special here, but just computer printed Motley Crue Quaternary and the self-titled albums with track listings. What's uh, Quaternary? Oh, you don't know. That's a that's an EP. Uh, initially, it was a mail order only EP. Okay. Um, but I bought a Japanese version with all these bonus tracks. So basically what it is, is each Motley Crue member did one solo track. Planet Boom is Tommy. Bittersweet is a McMars blues. Father is sort of like an industrial Nikki Six song. And Friends is a piano-based John Karabi song. And then Baby Kills is an actual Motley Crue full band song with um, somebody plays Clavine on it. And it's it's pretty awesome. And then demos on the uh, Japanese bonus tracks. And just the standard <laughs> album with uh, the, the remastered bonus tracks. Um I was very much into Motley Crue when this came out. And speaking of bonus tracks, this is not an original Decade of Decadence anymore because I ended up getting a Japanese version with bonus tracks and I recorded that onto a cassette and used this as the cover. Wait, do you see how I did the track listing? I inserted a piece of red paper with the modified track listing. You, you can't tell on camera? It's flawless. Thank you. That was the goal. <laughs> um, next, we're into Metallica. Oh, Metallica. Metallica. Um, tons and tons of Metallica here. Um, all on these Max L's. Um, nothing much to speak of here. The track listings are just in my handwriting, but you can see I've got Metallica S&M. The Whiskey in the Jar, that's all three CDs on one cassette. Uh, Garage Inc. on two cassettes. Uh, Bay Area Thrashers, which is a sort of a bootleg that was officially released on CD. Uh, Fuel, again, that's all the CDs on one cassette. Same with Unforgiven 2 and Memory Remains. And the Load and Reload albums. I love the Reload. They exactly like the same font. Did my best. Wow. So that's a stack of uh, Metallica. But there's, I had a lot of Metallica that I recorded. Before you move on to, to the next one, I have something to show Metallica related. Actually, I I got some uh, some homework for you. A little bit of a mission, if you choose to accept it, Mr. <laughs> sure. Sure. Over, over a decade ago, at a pawn shop for a quarter, I picked up this cassette, which is Metallica and Justice for All. Okay. No cover art. It was just a, a, a plain cassette. Now that I've seen your skill of making uh, you know, custom artwork, I'm giving you the mission of uh, hooking me up. With a nice custom made and justice for all. If, I if, will if you like it. I will create a custom justice for oh shit, we've got comments that I haven't even seen them rolling in. Oh, Chris, how are you doing this morning, sir? Okay, so let's uh let's let's rewind here. We yeah. have Mr. John Clauser, who's excited about my Mr. Big. 
And we have Chris, my rock and roll heaven. Good morning, sir. Morning. Um, he is a crazy, crazy collector. Nice. Bump Ahead was a good album, sir. And um, I, this box doesn't have my mixtapes that I made for girls, but I do have a mixtape that I made with for a girl. And there's a post about it on my site. Uh, John, I found this in my parents' basement. I didn't know it still existed. Thank you, Harrison. Really appreciate you uh, showing up to comment. Hey, Harrison. So he still got a bunch of his mixes, which are good. I mean, I didn't. Most of them, I I just gave to the girl in question. Right. All right. So finishing off this top layer of cassettes, we have some more Motley Crue and some Kim Mitchell. Ooh. Um. This is not. Shout at the Devil, an original cassette. No, no, no. This is the remastered Shout at the Devil with the bonus tracks. Look how I did that. I cut that out. And yeah. It, I matted it around. Very nice. Um, um, this is not uh, the Canadian Leather Records mix of Too Fast for Love. This is just the Columbia House mix. No big deal, but that's that's an original cassette. It's not the Leather a mix? The Leather Records mix was a rougher mix of the too fast for love album you can get it on the um music to crash your car 2 oh. volume one box set yeah no I'm, I'm i'm aware of the leather mix i was just asking like that's because i thought all canadian cassettes were the the leather mix not later ones oh. i got that i got that in like 89 okay i have the one i have is uh, is leather and i was so confused because the track listing doesn't match what's on the artwork so i was listening to it and i'm like this doesn't fit and then i, I later realized it's what was going on uh, in answer to Chris, I don't know how many are in here. I'm thinking maybe a hundred, but I'm not sure. Uh, Steve Morse band, Stress Fest, and I did a little. Look at that. That's their logo. No, but it's something <laughs> similar. You know, similar <laughs> enough. <laughs> Nothing special it here. With the job. Uh, Gary Morse. Good album, um, but nothing special. I use that software all the time. Oh, you know what? I should point out, though, that it is colored paper. I bought a ton of colored paper, especially just for making these tapes. So what year are we rewinding to here? What year would you make these, Mike? This would have been, I'm hoping when we get into the KISS, I'm hoping that there's really old stuff. But this would have been primarily from the record store days, 94 through to about 2000. Wow. When I bought a Discman for the car. Wow. Again, photocopy. So like pre-internet, like the internet was just starting out. An original. Ah, I love that one. Me too. Too short. It's way too short, though. Yeah, it's basically longer. an EP when you listen to it. Feels like it. There you go, yeah. Oral fixations. I, I like this album. Mm -hmm. Andy Curran, I believe, uh, co-wrote a lot of stuff on this album. I'm really? not mistaken. Well, I was very talented, Chris. This is a long time ago. <laughs> You're still talented. You're still talented, Mike. Don't uh, don't underestimate yourself. Speaking of Motley Crue, remember these guys? Yes. <laughs> Sad to say that I do. It's one of those things that I never would have bought if I wasn't working at the record store. And here's a, an indie band from Cambridge, Ontario, the Mighty Fishermen, with their album Super Rock. Super Rock. Some guys that uh, worked at the record store were in that band. So, you know, you have to obligatory buy the, the cassette. Of course. All right, next level. Oh, we're into uh, some more Motley Crue with some Marillion. Here's Girls, 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 but modified to include the bonus tracks. Once again, bonus right. tracks printed in red ink. <laughs> I love it. Oh, there's a Mr. Bungle and some Metallica that fell through the cracks. But uh, their second album, Disco Valente. On a Denon, a nice Denon. Denon, yeah. This was a real bitch to write all the uh, song titles because that track, The Bends, has like a million subtitles to it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. just read those album, uh, the song titles. Like, s spell that. What the fuck, right? Mishka now squaws. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this was a pain in the ass. Like Maddox. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's the Niacin. Yeah, Billy Sheehan's uh, jazz uh, project. I believe it was a jazz trio. Yes, three names. Yeah, Dennis Chambers. <laughs> and I believe I copied the color scheme from the CD when I did that with my pencil case full of marker pens. 
Right on. But here's a ton of Metallica with more cool art. And um, again, there's all the Marillion. There's some cool Megadeth. Hey, how about I give you that Justice for All cover? Sure. What's it look like? Well, it's nothing special, but I mean, it ain't too bad. That'll do the trick. Look at that. Awesome. Awesome. With details on the back. That would have been the date that I recorded it to cassette. Five thirteen ninety nine. <laughs> Awesome. I'll take it. And, uh, you know, we got uh, Garage Days, Master. Look at what I did with the Creeping Death, Jump in the Fire, and One singles. That is a beautiful logo. Isn't that nice? I don't know why I, I just stuck that Proof of Purchase sticker there. Be probably because it was just available. <laughs> um, there's the Creeping Death uh, using the colored marker pens once again to differentiate the two sides. So these are just wow. cassettes you would have copied from CD? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every one of them, basically. Um, you can find a lot of great albums at, for decent prices. This is true, and I'm discovering that now. And that's that's it exactly. The vinyl. Yeah. The cassettes are also going up, though. They're, yeah. they're going up. So Here's buy them out, folks, while you can. Here's one that I'm the most proud of. Um, I found this in my Megadeth collection. First of all, look at that. All the matching logos and everything. Nice. But check out the So Far So Good So What Rust in Peace. Flash Rust in Peace. Look at that. I, what I did here is I printed out the cover twice. Once on yellow paper. Once on blue paper. And then I carefully cut it out and glued the whole thing together like that. You can see the seam. You know, from afar, someone might mistake it for... For that, like the colors are the same. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. But yeah, like I, I'm, I that's that's just it was a way of expressing myself creatively. Right. Oh, I love it. It looks great. Oh, you like a little band called Max Webster, don't you? I do. I do. So there's my Max Webster. I had them all on CD. Oh my god, I gotta but get them on CD. I don't have any. Put a little bit of effort into some of those to make them look legit you know yeah, that middle one is cool with the, with the line oh look what i did on the front of that one that is cool which which album is that mutiny up my sleeve <laughs> i don't know put the sticker there for some reason track listing on the back so typically you know i would be listening to this album and recording it to cassette and making the artwork at that time yeah I'm just sitting there doodling getting inspired by the tunes Getting inspired. So yeah. Justin McKagan, uh, believe in me, with photocopied front cover. I remember walking to the library. Oh, look at that. And photocopied back cover. Look at that. I remember walking to the library that day. That was a that was a fun day. Do you have uh, the, the tape deck at the cottage or is that at your place? Yeah, it's at my place. At your place. Uh, it's too bad you could have played some cassettes this weekend. Yeah. yeah, no kidding. Uh, but I couldn't play that Journey cassette that Tim got me either. Okay, we're seriously into the Marillion now. There's an entire row here. So we'll just take them bit by bit, but very colorful. Here's a stack of Marillion. Look at this. I I cut out I cut out the album cover from a flyer and put it on the spine. Wow. Methodical track listing there. This one was done in silver marker pen on purple paper with a little Marillion Berry guy cut out again from a flyer. There he is again on the spine. Marillion Christmas album. Again, there's the artwork cut out from a flyer. Did it all festive on the side. Marillion singles box set. Wow. Is, is that the actual color... Uh... Uh, I had to condense, I think, eight CDs onto four cassettes, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But again, the the spines with the artwork on them, um, you know, coordinated. Nice. All to look like they're part of the same series. <laughs> I can't believe this. I'm actually kind of shocked at what I'm seeing here. Another stack of Marillion. 
So much gold. I honestly do not remember putting this much effort into this. And some of this stuff is really rare. Like this was a, a mail order only thing that you had to order from their website. It's sort of like a sampler of their live stuff, but it also had an exclusive track, which I believe was this live version of Bell in the Sea. And it had this band interview. Yeah. And you have the and website there? I wonder if that's still valid. I think it is. I think it redirects to dot com. Noted if I see it. Yeah, that, that, that's out there. Rare, but it's out there. Merlion dot zodiac with the artwork. Oh. Merlion.com with something on the spine there. And the artwork. And again, using a font, trying to duplicate the CD as much as possible. This is a great album, uh, Marillion Unplugged at the Walls. This has been since reissued in a deluxe uh, CD. It's a fantastic acoustic album done at a restaurant. Nice. Um, Marillion, Radiation. we done it in um, sort of neon orange there with black. There's the artwork track listing with bonus tracks and you can kind of see i colored in the the spine there to give it that radiation glow like the album cover the remix ep tales from the engine room nice and double live marillion pits piston broke live in europe 97 with the track listings and details on the back I I am flabbergasted how much effort I put into this stuff. But I didn't have a girlfriend, so you had time. I had, had time. time. They're so coordinated. They they great. The, you know, they've all got the artwork uh, on the, the spine there. I'm I'm flabbergasted and impressed. From afar, I, I'd be fooled and led to believe that those are originals. Like I wouldn't know better. No kidding. No kidding. Um a lot of these were mail order only stuff that you could only get from their website like the making of series a lot of demos and sketches yeah afraid of sunlight full two cd version with all the bonus tracks and uh same with merlian brave look at that i even did it so that the face lines up when you line up the cassettes man I am can you think of the things that, that are gone? Because this is just from like J to N. Uh, wow. Marillion are progressive. Yes, they are. Um, but they have a lot of pop elements too. Um, early Marillion is a whole different animal. Very, very progressive, uh, like early Genesis. But later Marillion, quite uh, pop. And uh, thank you, Chris. They, uh, I, I guess I wanted them to look like originals. And again, who was I doing this for? Oh, Here's my God, so much more Marillion. Here's another stack of Marillion. Jeez. Live in Caracas. Singles collection. Oh, there's a Metallica Black album that got uh, oh. mixed in there. Holidays in Eden, Marillion, Season's End, and Besides Themselves. And again, continuing with the stuff on the spines as often as I could. Wow. And the Black album, you know, Black on Black. <laughs> Uh, more Marillion. And I think this is the last of it. Live album. The Thieving Magpie. Clutching at Straws. Full 2 CD, CD edition with the logo and the Torch character. Misplaced Childhood with the Drummer Boy. Yeah. With the, I can't believe this. Look, I put all the characters on the side. I'm just so blown away. I'm keeping every single one of these, man. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Now that you have a tape deck, it'd be stupid not to. Yes, yeah, so they have a number of greatest hits. Uh, the one that I showed earlier, um, the singles collection, it's called Six of One, Half Dozen of the Other, is a good sampling of the early albums, the EMI era of both lead singers. Or if you want to go for a studio, studio album, man, I got to go with 1989's Season's End. Try that one out. I believe in trying studio albums, honestly, when I can. A couple miscellaneous ones, some jazz. This is all music from the uh, Peanuts cartoons. Oh. Originals based on the Peanuts cartoons by Winton and Alice Marsalis. Nice. Um, Marvelous 3. Um, 
Butch Walker was okay. the guy. There's the album cover there. And their big hit, I think it was Freak of the Week. Rings a bell. Bet you Chris Preston knows. Yeah, I do have to keep all of these. Yeah, check them out. Check out the six of one, half dozen of the other, and Season's End albums. Okay, we are more than halfway through this box. We have uh, Marigold. Uh, you heard me talk about Rob Zabo. Um, yes. Hang on, there were two Marigolds here. Here they are. Rob Zabo, he had this local band, Marigold. And uh, at the end of the show, I'll play one of his original tunes with his band, Plasticine, which I think Marigold kind of evolved out of Plasticine. There's two of his cassettes recorded off the CDs. Uh, an original, Ingve. This is a great okay. album, by the way. Highly recommend that one as a starting point for Ingve. Love it. Um, Dana Manning, local um, from Stratford, Ontario. Um, believe Harry Hess from Harem Scarum produced her debut album, but I really liked her single "My Addiction." Uh, check it out on YouTube. She did a really cute video for "My Addiction." Not in this box, sir. Uh, this is just according to the label in the box. This is from J to N. Uh, some more Ingve, Inspiration, which is his covers album, piece of shit. I can't wait, which was a Japanese EP. Wait a minute, whoa, back up, back up. <laughs> why Why is it a piece of shit? <laughs> That's terrible, man. Yeah, I've never heard it. It's, so it's terrible. Um, I mean, he sings some of these songs, but uh, Carry On, Wayward Son with Jeff Scott Soto, uh, Pictures of Home, Gates of Babylon, Manic Depression. Ingve sings Manic Depression. Ugh. From uh, Jimi Hendrix? Yeah. Uh, in the Dead of Night, Mistreated, Sales of Charon, Demon's Eye, Anthem, and Child in Time. A lot Anthem? of purple and rainbow. Anthem by Rush? I believe it was. I think. I, I Honestly, it's very lackluster. I'm not a big covers album guy. And when he starts off uh, with just... just okay. Yeah. <laughs> Chris knows Dana. There you go. My Addiction is Amazing. There you go. Check it out on YouTube. It was a really fun song and video. Oh, more Ingve. Ingve. Odyssey with Joe Lynn Turner. Oh, nice. My original copy of Trilogy given to me for Christmas of either 86 or 87. I love that cover art. So good. I know, right? Uh, I remember this coming into CD, uh, on CD at the record store during my first year there. And somebody's like, <laughs> show that to Mike. He'll like it. And I'm like, yeah, it's Ingve. Oh, hey, Kelly, how are you doing this morning? Um, no, I've never been cool. And uh, I don't even, that's not even a conversation. <laughs> um, Mad Season live EP. That was a promo only EP. That's uh, Lane Staley with uh, Stone Gossard from Pearl Jam. Oh, wow. Oh, she did some stuff with M. Griner. That wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, that would make sense to me. Here's an original. I love this album. It's George Lynch's first fully fledged solo album, Sacred Groove. Huh. What this year is an was it? Album. A lot of good singers on this. Um, the Nelson Twins. Yeah. Uh, Glenn Hughes. Um, Ray Gillen. Wow. And uh, a guy by the name of Mandy Lyon from a band called World War III. And I, I don't like his voice. Huh. So, what year would this have been? Early 90s, 1990? trying to remember yeah yeah around then um live throwing copper i don't know why i did that red stripe on the side i have no idea why i did that um it's a why nice not? touch i guess that was maybe that was just a lazy a lazy day dare i say why not dare i say why not instrumental john lord for this one i decided to put the track times on the cassette Ah. I don't know why, but look, there's some 10 and 11 minute tracks there. That's cool. You know what I always used to do after a while when I make mixtapes? I'd always put the date. I wish I'd done more of that. Because it's like a time capsule. Like, hey, this is what I was doing on, I don't know, I know. Mecca 11, 99. I wish there was more of that. Yeah. Oh, boy. My dad, my dad used to do that. So I find some mixtapes labeled 1974, and I find that so cool. Oh, this is, oh, sorry, this is another that got separated from its twin, but this is part two of the Thieving Magpie Marillion. 
It just got separated from its twin. Liquid Tension Experiment. You familiar with them? Yeah, uh, I think I have their CD. That's like uh, Dream Theater. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It's like a super group, right? Tony Levin. Um, 30 minute track to close the album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Yeah, I have that on CD, pretty sure. Here's a stack of Zeppelin. Ooh, a stack of Zeppelin. The box set, the BBC sessions. What are the yeah. bottom ones? That is cool? Led Zeppelin, the four CD box set. And notice okay. how each cassette is a slightly different pastel color. Yeah. Man. Beautiful. Um, some miscellaneous. There's um, my original copy of The Song Remains the Same on cassette. Mm. Mm -hmm. From Leather Wolf. House. Leather Wolf, dude. Leather Wolf. <laughs> Sorry. Um, my you God. I oh. love this album so much. Me too. Hang on. Hang on. Bam. Shit. You got it on vinyl. Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. Favorite track? Oh, hold on. It's been a while. I, can't, uh, I, I know I'm all off by heart. I can't, uh, I can't remember. It's it's not one I've, I've listened to many times, but I, I remember liking it a lot every time I listen to it. I you could tell you, man. My, uh, you should go to my website and read a story called Bad Mood Rising. Oh. <laughs> because they covered Bad Mood Rising. on. We were going to use it as the theme song for a high school horror movie. Really? Yeah. And I remember the teacher said, why don't you use the original song? And I was like, because it's the cool thing today is to use a heavy metal song. Yeah. And I was like, Bad Moon Rising. And the teacher didn't like our idea. <laughs> oh, man. Are you familiar with a band called Leadfoot? What is it? Leadfoot. Lead I don't think so. Uh, two ex-members of Corrosion of Conformity. Okay. And, uh, so it's, it's kind of stoner rock, but there's a great song on here called Ripe. And uh, I strongly recommend you check out the song Ripe. Uh, I bought the album for one song. No, okay, Chris. I uh, had a phase in my life where I felt like I didn't need all these cassettes anymore. Because, hey, I, I, I have CDs. What do I need the cassettes for? Yeah. So a lot of them ended up in a dumpster. And the rest of them I gave to an ex-girlfriend. And I like to tell people that today they are in a Thunder Bay landfill. So Deke is still digging through the Thunder Bay landfill, looking for the rest of my cassettes. But that's, that's the truth. Oh, that's sad. Kula Shaker were a great band out of the UK. Well, they might still be a great band. Never heard of them. I really like them. What uh, kind of music? Would, uh... Britpop, I would say, but more exotic. Okay. Now, Chris Preston, you were going to lose your shit because it looks like the entire rest of the box, aside from a couple cassettes, is all Kiss. Oh. Um, here's the remainder of the non-Kiss. Um, another cassette to go with my Merlion Holidays in Eden, because those were two CD sets, so sometimes they ended up on two cassettes. Lenny yeah. Kravitz, Are You Going to Go My Way? And I think If You Can't Say No was an EP. Um, oh, look at that. Look what I did with... Uh, are you going to go my way? Orange and pink uh, pen ah. alternating from line to line to let the songs stand out more. You being interesting. I love it. And then for this Kula Shaker, their debut album, K, I put the bonus tracks in a different color. Um, here's that Lenny Kravitz EP. I don't remember this at all. Um, you can't say no. I, oh, so it's I, the same song, different versions. Six versions. I have no memory of that, and I don't know if I even still have the CD of it, to be honest. But the rest of it, all kiss, it looks like. So let's go. And let's a, lot go are, a lot of these are original. They're not recorded. The moment you've all been waiting for. Hey, I hope so you enjoy it. Here's just a bunch of recorded ones. Okay. Psycho Great. Circus, Carnival, Greatest Hits, Greatest Kiss, MTV. So What's the difference between Greatest Hits and Greatest Kiss? Okay. I know Are you familiar with Greatest Kiss, the black CD cover? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Greatest Hits was a white CD cover that was exclusive to England. So I oh, ordered cool. it from the UK, and I uh, believe one of the major differences was it had Crazy Crazy Nights on it. That's it? Well, I don't have to guess. I can just look. <laughs> greatest Hits. Here's the track list right here. And yeah, it opens with Crazy Crazy Nights. 
Yeah. It wasn't the kind of kiss that they were promoting in 1997, according to the back. Interesting. Uh, now, I will say this. When I was a really young fellow in grade seven and eight, I made hand-drawn kiss covers for everything. But I decided at one point in the, in the 90s that I needed to up my kiss game, and I downloaded the kiss font, and I reprinted everything. So all of the original kiss covers, with a few very, very, very slight exceptions, are gone. Sad. But... Here's some more kiss and a lot of originals. So these would have been my copies that I had when I was a kid. Uh, Alive 3. This is where Chris Preston's like, I need that one. <laughs> hey, look who's watching. And yes, Deke Jex always brings <laughs> the muscle. So you can tell which ones I bought on cassette originally and which ones I bought on CD. Because yeah. these two I bought on CD. Unholy Kisses is a bootleg. Okay, I was going to say. The Forever EP, the highly sought Forever EP. I've never even seen that. There you I've go. I've never even seen a copy of that. Wow. Chris P. and I were just talking about this a few weeks ago. Every CD copy of this EP that I've ever run into, every copy has a manufacturer's defect and there's a problem, a flaw on Forever. Every copy. Really? And these are just uh, standard... There you go. There I, you I go. never liked though. I never liked though how some cassettes were vertical yeah. and other cassettes were horizontal. It just um same. And my sister never liked the cover for Smashes, Thrashes, and Hits with the, the hands coming up to grasp Gene's groin there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these well, things that like, I didn't think about. I'm just like, oh, you know, it's fans. It's fans. Yeah. My sister's like, you know, look where they're grabbing. And I'm like, oh. Okay. Get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> My originals. There you go. I'm, there you I'm go. shocked. I still have these, man. I am shocked. That's cool. Hold on to those, dude. Hold oh, on. They're not going anywhere. They're not going any except for back home with me. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Especially now that you have a tape deck, you'll be able to rock them. And this was my very I mean, this is the this is history. This is my first kiss cassette ever. That that, that copy? That specific copy? This copy. Wow! Copy. I, I'm. I'm. I think it was Asylum. Wow. Yeah, I think it was. Because it was the new album when I got into Kiss, and you know, look at that. Uh, doesn't that make you nostalgic? The Mercury label. Yeah, with an actual sticker. I love Where's that. Tim? I remember... Where's Tim? I know. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Animal eyes. Animal eyes, which we've talked about. I love it. You're not. The biggest fan, but no, I love and if it. If Tim was here, he'd be like, and I'm like, the variant that you have there is a <laughs> record club. Now, you can tell by the chromium dioxide label there on the bottom or whatever that is. QC10 <laughs> is what it is. And Kiss cassettes have gone up in price, too. Good to know. Yeah. No, they have. They have. Now, Anything hard rock, heavy metal, you're going to pay a hefty penny. Flick it up. One of my first Kiss cassettes. And look how they matched the label to the white. Like, Yeah. I love it. Man, this is making me so nostalgic. Like, oh, and the sun has just come out, too. It's like, oh. <laughs> it's meant to be. Yeah, it's nice and sunny. I'll take you guys outside in a, in a, in a bit. Okay. Guys... Here's another stack. Stack of kiss. Yeah, and it looks like we go all the way down to Judas Priest and, again, a, a lot of original cassettes. What? Kiss demos 81 to 83. That's a bootleg. Uh, two copies of Creatures of the Night, one for each mix. Uh, okay. So this would yeah. be the uh, the 85 remix. With Bruce Kulick on the cover, yeah. Yeah, but it's not on me. mine. And then, strangely enough, the cassette with Bruce Kulick on the cover, the Canadian cassette, is the original mix. Oh. Strangely enough. What? Yeah. This is the original mix, even though it has Bruce on the cover. Confusing. You want to, One of my biggest regrets... Oh, hey, John. Hey, nice. hey, wait, wait, John. Uh, I recommend later on you go back and you watch the opening to the show because we were doing a little, uh, we, were, we were playing around, Jex and I, and we were plugging your shirt. Yeah. This is like Christmas morning, dude. When are we yeah. going to Judas Priest? <laughs> One of my biggest regrets is that Creatures of the Night with Bruce on the cover. I saw it on vinyl at Value Village. This is back in 2015. They were asking 15 for it. 
I was just starting out college. I didn't have a lot of money. I'm like, I better not. Thinking back, I'm like, I should have totally spent the 15 bucks on that. You know, like, Jax, was I talking to you? It was it was you, I think. We were talking about a trip that I made to the nuclear power plant in high school. Yeah, yeah that so was our the actual cassette. The actual cassette that I bought at the lunch hour. That's awesome. And this German kid in, I don't know why I said German kid, just because he was very proudly German. This German kid in my class, Mark Zimmerman, loaned me the money to buy this that day. And I listened to it on my walk. Yeah. Um, so cool. Okay, so Kiss Killer is recorded from my vinyl. Oh, Actually, cool. no, this is recorded from my Japanese CD. Okay. You can tell by the bonus tracks, Escape from the Island and sure. Shandy. Shandy, yeah. Um, music from the elder. I don't know. Oh, because there's two mixes of this too. This is another album that there's two mixes of. So here's a store bought music from the elder. Okay. And yeah. then here is a cassette that's dubbed from the 1997 remaster. Now I believe the 1997 remaster has the Japanese track listing, which was yeah. in a different order and has a little bit of a different, uh, has more of the Gregorian chanting. Yeah. And it's more, yeah, it's the story they wanted to tell as for when they released right. it. Like, it starts out with, um, oh, what song? Uh, it starts out with um, uh, Fanfare. Burr, 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 yeah. Burr. Right, that, yeah. That sounds like the opening Fanfare to something. True. Yeah, the uh, other version opens with, uh, oh, what's the name of the song? It's really heavy. The Oath. Oh, that's so good. But like the both. lyrics, the, the vocals are recorded so muddy that you it's slushy. You can't really hear what Paul is saying, the individual words, you know? True. It's true. I like that. I find that's, that's a charm. It, well, <laughs> it is. It is. But it Dynasty. was hard to get through. Now, the, the Priceless, Priceless Collection. Right. I'm hoping Chris have, B has some memories of the Priceless Collection. I have Destroyer on Priceless. Those were the two. Yeah. So you could get this and Destroyer on the Priceless Collection. I learned that from Tim, yeah. That's right. We had that discussion. And then this is an 80s uh, reissue of Unmasked. There was a long period of time where you couldn't get Unmasked. And this really? was reissued around 88, 87, 88. Okay. A lot of these cassettes actually were not available until an 88 reissue, including my birthday present that year. All four solo albums. I think I've told this story a few times. How yeah. in that very bedroom over there, I immersed myself in these albums and I listened to them alphabetically by last name, as they are still filed today. That's so cool. About three oh times in a row. One, two, th you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Wow. What a great afternoon. That was a hell of a birthday. And I'm thinking 87. I'm thinking that was 87. Nice. Um, yeah, what a consistency on the spines there. They all match. What do we got? What do we got? Double all platinum, right. uh, a recorded Alive 2 because I had the CD. Love, Love Gun. Gun. Rock and Roll Over. Hey, let's see if that destroyer is priceless. It is. I think it is. Yeah, that's the same one I have. Yeah. The first Kiss Kiss that I bought. That's the one. And I know Tim really likes to see, you know, how the artwork is laid out on the front cover. So there you go. Yeah. I really wish Tim was here. Me too. Me too. You'll have to catch it later later on. Yeah, I would like an original copy of Dynasty 2 now that you guys have gotten me into collecting these damn things again. <laughs> Man, am I ever glad these survived. Uh, again, this was hard to find until a 1987 reissue. And Rock and Roll Over was the last full group Kiss Studio album that I needed that I got for my collection. Um, Gone. Yep. And uh, yeah, that's that pile. And I think there's only a few Kiss left and then we're into like the Priest. Ooh. Um, this is a, an 80s reissue of Hotter Than Hell. Nice. Oh, the red font. That's so cool. Oh, I like that. I like Isn't that snazzy? Yeah. Snazzy. <laughs> snazzy. Snazzy. And um, recorded Dressed to Kill. That's I must have had that on CD. Oh, <laughs> wow, look at this old vintage Maxell that I taped it on. And um, Kiss in Time in San Francisco. That's a great bootleg of an early show uh, around the time of Hotter Than Hell. Great, great bootleg. John T. Snow knows that one. Okay, um, before we get into the priest, there's a few more K's. Oh, two more Kiss. And there they go. <laughs> the debut, Kiss by uh -huh. Kiss. I, I love how it's like, 
two different fonts there. Kiss by Kiss. Yeah. Oh, that one's horizontal. Horizontal for some reason. There you go. And this is obviously a later issue because it's clear. I feel like I'm just here today. I'm just going, hey, that's cool. That's nice. I'm Look sorry. at that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. And, oh, and for the Tim Durlings out there, Columbia House. Ah, there you go. <laughs> no, I, love I, just... you. I love having a front row seat for this stuff. Well, I'm just happy to have somebody to talk to. It's no fun doing this without talking to somebody. Right, right. On a den and oh, look at the custom Wicked Lester. So wow. this is another one that Snowman has. And on side one is the Wicked Lester album. And on side two is the Eddie Kramer Kiss demo. And this was issued as a single bootleg CD. Okay. I was going to say, that was never officially released, Wicked Lester. No. No. Although I, I I have heard Gene say, oh, you know what? It's going to be in the box set. Ah, Tim. Tim. You don't hey, know what you've hey. missed. Tim. You Tim. don't know what you've missed. You missed gold. He has the uh, the Wicked Lester on vinyl. Really? Wow. Yeah, now, I will say my CD is terrible. It it it. There's like a leakage of music. You can hear leakage, tape oh. leakage, and it's really te terrible. I have a lot of XL 290s in here. I feel like uh, we may have missed a lot of detail that if Tim was here earlier, we could have got. It's all uh, good. Finish, finishing off the K section before we get into Judas Priest. Um, you know I'm a big Blue Rodeo fan. This is Greg Keeler's solo album, Gone. Right. Gold pen on brown paper. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, some more Lenny Kravitz. These are the bonus tracks from the vinyl edition of Are You Gonna Go My Way. Uh, Ascension is a great song. This live version of Sister is probably the best version of Sister I've ever heard. And that acoustic version of Believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is recorded like in a hotel room. And it sounds incredible. Oh. Huh. Yeah, Tim. Uh, and then if you want to see any more cassettes up close of my Kiss collection, you just let me know. I'll send you some photos. Uh, my King's X. Oh, wow. Nice set there. Yeah. Kings of the Absurd was a split bootleg with Faith No More. It had four King's X songs on it, and the rest was all Faith No More. So I recorded them to two individual bootlegs. Was that in a... Okay. Yeah. Um, and look at the work I went to on Ear Candy there. Martin Popoff's yeah. favorite King's X. Yeah, that's beautiful. You respected the colors and everything, I believe. I loved that album. And I, you know, when you love an album, uh, I guess I put a lot of effort into it. I need to get it. I don't have that one. Okay, you're in the previous priest, and these are all ones that I made. Um, 98 Live Meltdown. Ah, uh, yeah. Concert Classics, which was a bootleg slash radio broadcast that has since been officially issued in the 50 years of, or 50 heavy metal years of music box set. Priest Live and Rare is a Japanese import CD and Metal Works, obviously the official compilation. Um, photocopied covers on the Metal Works. Um, computer printed covers. Ah, oh, so cool. Looks a nice. lot of effort. A lot of effort. And, of course, some store-bought Priest. And this, this is an album that I was talking to you guys about a month ago, maybe. And I bought this here in 1987 at a store called Stedman's Chromium Dioxide. And it was my introduction to anything pre-Screaming for Vengeance. So anything pre-Screaming for Vengeance, this was the very first time I ever heard those songs. Metal Gods, Heading Out to the Highway, Breaking the Law. You know, you only get to hear those songs first one time. And this is the very cassette. That's awesome. The very cassette. I have that cassette as well. And that's uncut, right? Unedited? This is unedited. Yeah. Okay, that's good. At least I have the cassette too, because I have the CD that's edited. Yes, actually, Tim. Yeah, dude. A lot of my favorite Transformers came from our Stedman store. Yeah. Speaking of Screaming for Vengeance, I got this for Easter in, I'm going to say, 85. And I hated it. What? I hated it. I was so young. And, you know, side two opens up. Screaming for Vengeance. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what is he singing? Why can't he go down several into my hearing range? It was, 
it was it was too much. And I almost traded this away to the next door neighbor, George Balaz. And I thought better of it. And eventually, about a year later, it finally started to click with me. And by summer of 86, by summer of 86, this was some of my favorite priest. Yeah. A year and a half later. A year and a half. Yeah. This is one of my favorites. Oh. Interesting. Um, I don't remember Stedman's. Well, uh, here in rural Ontario, we did have Stedman's. Uh, Wilco, we had that in Kitchener. I remember Wilco. I remember Wilco. And uh, here's another cassette. This is sort of um, Tim will Tim will know a more technical term, but I call these gas station specials. It's like a you know, budget bull. You got another thing coming, hot rocking, hell bent for leather, and then on the back the full track list. But oh, but yeah. it is official. Or... Yeah, it's a, it's it's on um, CBS. Manufactured exclusively for IMG Inc. Nashville, Tennessee. So uh, maybe licensed. Licensed, okay. For low budget bargain bin. You know, do you remember yeah. walking into a gas station and they'd have that cardboard box with all of the cassettes in it? Yeah. Um, no gas day. Oh, he's saying gas day special is a good term. I think is what he's saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. CDs later. Yeah. CBS special products. Yeah. And I have another priest here of. A similar ilk, if I can find it. Well, we'll just grab another stack of priests. This is almost the end, by the way. We're almost done. Uh, Hero Hero. This was so hard to find in the late 80s. And I bought this cassette in uh, Calgary, Alberta, when I was visiting my cousin in the summer of 1990. And it was the first time that I'd found a good quality copy of Hero Hero with the full track list. I've never come across thing it. About this album is a compilation, but it has every single track from Rockarola remixed. And to this day, I don't know 100% sure why Rockarola was remixed, but look at that cover. That cover's great. Like, this was the kind of thing I wanted just for the cover, if not for the remix. Yeah. Oh, uh, Tim's clarifying no, not an official release. Okay. Oh, okay. They had a Wilco. Oh. Oh, 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 I, okay, dude, I, I remember this happening in the record store days, too. People would do that. They'd screw HMV over by giving them Columbia House, sealed Columbia House, and returning them for other things. And then people would get pissed off. How come I'm buying a Columbia House on HMV? The nerve of some people. Yeah, there you go. Uh, a lot of these are going to be Columbia House, I think, but... For some reason, British Steel isn't. I must have bought that at Zeller's. Oh, I have a Columbia House edition of, of British Steel. You know, the, the black cassettes. The black cassettes are what I remember. Yeah. Everything changed to clear cassettes by the late 80s, I think. Uh, I remember. Um, young, but I remember. Here's something. My original Unleashed in the East, which I bought at a farmer's market in Kitchener, Ontario. Nice. But later on, I got the Japanese CD, which had four bonus tracks. Ah, so I put them on a separate cassette called Priest in the East, which was the name of the Japanese version of the album. Priest in I love how you, you respected the color. Uh, I wanted um, to make it match. <laughs> uh, two more. Hellbent. Hellbent. Falada. And the very rare stained class. That was very hard to find back then. That's the same. I had the same one. I had the exact same one. That was the last Priest album that I needed to find at that time. And I didn't even know 100% sure if it existed. I'd heard of it, but never seen it. And I was really happy to get this on cassette. And then about, let's see, that would have been 89. A year later, Judas Priest were on trial in um, somewhere in Arizona. I don't remember if it was Phoenix or Vegas in nevada i can't remember somewhere in the states they were on trial for this yeah. cover better by you better better than me which supposedly had the subliminal message do it embedded into the song now i ask you this uh do it what does that what does that tell you what are you doing are you committing suicide or are you eating ice cream or putting too much whipped cream in your coffee and they also claimed the word suicide could be seen on the ear of the the model but yeah, it's so clearly there, isn't it? Where it says suicide. 
Um, I don't know if you've ever seen the documentary Dreamer Deceivers about that trial. I've it's seen, on- I've seen most of it. Um, uh, but after a while, it was just so depressing and hard to watch. It is. It is. Uh, it's very graphic. But yeah. my favorite part of it, and I relished it when I first saw it, is when Judas Priest lawyers take um, the song Exciter and play it backwards for the judge. And it goes, I asked for her to get a peppermint. I asked for her to get one. And they're like, there you go. You play it backwards and you can hear things that aren't there. There's no way Rob Halford wrote that lyric thinking subliminally, I want people to get their girlfriends a peppermint, you know? So, and you could see the judge's eyes kind of just go like, when they played that snippet and uh, just kind of proved their point that you can play anything backwards and make it sound interesting. And that case was so sad. And, and like I said, uh, very graphic, that documentary, those are two very troubled kids and yeah. the family was troubled as well. And they wanted to blame it on somebody else. So why not blame music? It was very easy to do. My taped copy of Jugulator. Oh, see, that's an album. I, need to, I don't have it at all. The Contrarians recently uh, covered this. On yeah. Our show. My original painkiller bought here in the fall of 1990. This was in the aftermath of the trial featuring the song Between the Hammer and the Anvil, which is about the trial. And by now we are into clear cassettes. Yeah. But I think I got this the week of release and, uh, you know, brought it back here, lie down on the couch, put it on my headphones for the first time. Um, oh, Tim. Bright pink, Journey, Greatest Hits Live. Just when I was getting into Journey. Look what is that font? That's cool. And then on the back cover, the band members. Wow. Ah, man, this was such an important album to me. This, this very cassette was so important to me the year that I got it, 86. This was kind of like my first week of grade nine. I bought this cassette. Ah, this cassette has been well loved, but it's still in good shape. I'm amazed, actually, some of these cassettes are in such good shape. You took care of them, man. And Tim, look at this. The guy's an encyclopedia. I know. It's amazing. I love it. You remember Rob Halford's solo band Fight, right? Yes. Uh, apparently, they got mixed in with the priest. Oh, well, yeah. It's- it all fits, right? It's all Halford. Now, I got this War of Words cassette, but what I didn't know until many years later is that the CD version had a bonus track. So I ended up upgrading to CD much later. Um, the second album, though, I got on CD right from the get-go. The bonus tracks are unlisted. And oh. yeah, uh, and Chris, I will argue that there is no album that sounds like Turbo before or since. It's a one-off. Nobody ever made an album that sounded exactly like Turbo. Okay, that's true, too. I also strongly recommend an album called Black Knight, a tribute to Deep Purple, according to New York. Uh, Steve Vai's former bassist, T.M. Stevens, did a funky, funky, funky tribute to Deep Purple with different singers. Uh, Joe Lynn Turner, uh, Corey Glover from Living Color. I can't remember who all sings on this, but there's a lot of different singers, and it is excellent. Funky purple in the very last stack of rock the very last more journey trial by fire trial by by fire but this is the japanese version with i can see it in your eyes on side two the time cubed box set or time three i made the effort of getting the three there to be superscript just like it should be and each cassette is labeled time one time two and time three just like the cds with the three in superscript that was difficult to do yeah i can imagine look i put the times on each track was this was taking a long time to do honestly and sometimes you had to print them off multiple times because the formatting on your screen wouldn't necessarily be what printed out on your printer and i might not have been satisfied with the first run so i had to do it again Good, good old technology. Good old 90s technology. Arrival. Journey Arrival. Now, this is special because it combines all the tracks from the U.S. and Japanese CD onto one cassette. Nice. And, oh, classic. It's, you got to have the Journey fun. Greatest Hits. Look at that font. 
Yeah, it's kind of journey-like, isn't it? Well, yeah. Look at that. SBM. Super bit mapping. They put that on those Sony CDs back then. And it looks like the last two priests. Sin After Sin and Rockarola Sad Wings on one cassette. Again, a good find. That is really hard cool. to get on cassette. Twin back. Yep, that's Anthem. Or Attic, sorry, Attic. Can you I have Rockarola on Attic on cassette. I do not have Sad Wings, though. There you go. 1988 Attic reissue. And let's just catch up here. Um, 70s cassettes had a lot of terrible designs. Arrival on cassette. Whoa. Yeah, that was the tail end of cassettes, really. These guys are just having a conversation now on their own that we're missing out on. Wow. Anyway, that was a nice hour there, Jax. I'll say. Wow. Box of cassettes. That's it. And there's a lot more than I was expecting. Dude. I, I am thrilled with the kiss, the original kisses that I found. Yeah. Yeah, Tim, you're going to have to go back and check those out and uh, see if there's anything you spot that's rare or uncommon. Yeah, you seriously. Can... Um, now, again, most of those kiss were 88 reissues, but Tim will be like, oh, yes, of course, those reissues came out in uh, Canada <laughs> in the fall of 88. Or, you know? <laughs> oh, thank you, guys. Thanks for watching. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. Jax, what do you got going on? You got Distortion Den next week. Yes. So next week, uh, so, well, actually, a week from today, which is going to be July 1st, Canada Day, we're going to have our Canada Day special which is April Wine, Nature of the Beast, going up against Triumph, uh, Allied Forces. Oh, and Deke's got the box set version of Allied Forces. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I mean, we both crazy. have it. We, we both got it, Deke and I. I uh, don't Andy, even have, I don't even Curry have. gave us a tip on how to get it. <laughs> the nerve. I don't have, I do have Nature of the Beast, though. Nice. Yeah, you know what, Tim? I made a mistake getting rid of those cassettes. We've We've, we've talked about this. But um, I made a mistake getting rid of those cassettes. So you got Canada Day coming up in Distortion Den next week. Yeah. Tentatively, we've got Canada Day on Friday. We're doing an early Canada Day. We just need to nail down the details. But we're thinking a three o'clock in the afternoon shift on the Friday. Yeah. So we're going to, should we say? Well, I guess, gonna... does that mean I have to take off? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Come <laughs> on, Mr. Mike. Go back to the beginning of the show and watch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be doing another uh, list, a top, a Nigel Tufnell top ten. And which I have a lot of uh, The subject is tentatively, and this is assuming we can get some people on board with lists. Top eleven Canadian bands that you probably haven't heard of outside of Canada. And last <laughs> night's show, the Arkells, are definitely on my list. Well, here's here's a little tease of my list. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> It was just a tease. This is just a tease. On cassette. <laughs> well, yeah, I brought that. I, brought, I have them on vinyl, but I brought this because of the nature of this show. Oh, my God. Look at you. <laughs> You're going to be in three places that weekend. Oh, that's true. Pre-recorded. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, the new Extreme 6 album we're reviewing. And I'm excited to see it because we've all kind of recorded our bits separately. Okay. Like Will, Will and I, we, we recorded it together, and then Tim and uh, Matt recorded their parts separately. So they're gonna they're gonna put it together somehow. So I haven't seen Tim or Matt's uh, input on the album. I don't know their thoughts yet. So interesting. I'm gonna be, it's gonna be fun to see. And I don't. I'm not gonna be receiving my copy until uh, July because I already ordered a Japanese import. But uh, uh, anything so bonus? Anything bonus? A single edit. But oh. anytime I can get a Japanese import from Amazon.ca. Instead of having to order it from a, a Japanese site that uses couriers, which deliver when I'm not home. Uh, anytime I can do that, I prefer to order from .ca. Yeah. All will be revealed on Tim's Vinyl Confessions. Okay, so to sum up, next week we have, on June 30th, if all goes well, 3 o'clock p.m. Friday, we are doing our Nigel Tufnell Top 10 Canadian bands that you haven't heard out, outside of Canada. You are doing a Distortion Den with two classic Canadian albums. And TVC... You're going to be on that too, doing Extreme Six. I'm everywhere next weekend. Yes, yeah. man. You're a busy <laughs> I, didn't, man. I didn't realize it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, awesome. as you know, we always like to go out on a song. And yeah. I know you like Max the Axe. So why don't we say Max the Axe tune? Do you have yeah. one you want to hear? Yeah. And I'm going to show you guys the beautiful weather before we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> beautiful. Well, the sun came out here. You know what? Uh, let me see. Um, 
Look at the sky. I might, guys. Be, taking a, I might be taking a risk here, but let me just. Uh, you can hear the cassettes falling. It's a beautiful day here, too, but. Uh, oh, there you go. Oh, boy. All my cables are caught up in my cassettes now. Okay, so I'm putting the laptop on my lap. <laughs> uh, Maxi Axe, what do you want to hear? What do, what do you want us to play? Um, <laughs> I don't know much of their stuff. I only know uh, God's on the Radio and the uh, what's the other one? Prone to Overload? Overload, yes. Um, now, I think I've played both of those recently, but why okay. don't we do... Oh, God. wait, wait, wait. Didn't you say something? You were going to play something? Uh... Oh, that's right. I was going to play some Rob Zabo. That's right. Yeah. That's right. that's right. Good call. Okay, so first of all, let me just uh, get the, let me just get the comment off the screen here. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I mentioned Rob Zabo. We showed his uh, Marigold cassettes, two of his releases under the name Marigold. Well, after that, he did a band called Plasticine with a local guy named uh, Steve Strongman, who is now a blues musician. But when they were doing a rock band, Plasticine, they smoked. So, Jex, I would like to present to you a song by Plasticine called Bones and Clothes, featuring Rob Zabo on rhythm guitar. Here we go. Awesome. Have a great day, everybody. Have a great weekend. And we will see you next week for the Canada Day special. Ciao. Bones and Clothes takes